Guru Gobind Rai was the son of the ninth Guru, Teg Bahadur, who was beheaded by the Mughals and his body was abandoned by his Sikh entourage. They fled easily because no one could recognize them. So Wait, Guru Gobind they fled easily because no one was the son of the ninth Guru, Teg Bahadur, who was beheaded by the Mughals and his body was abandoned by his Sikh entourage. They fled easily because no one could recognize them. So, Guru Gobind decided to give Sikhs a distinct look from now on so that they would always be compelled to uphold Sikh values. So, in 1699, Guru Gobind brought his Sikhs together at Anandapur. After their morning prayer- Wait. I don't understand. They managed to get away because nobody recognized them and he's like, let's change that so that we could be oppressed more easily? Hold on. I recognize them. So. I don't understand. Guru Gobind Rai was the son of the ninth Guru, Teg Bahadur, who was beheaded by the Mughals and his body was abandoned by his Sikh entourage. They fled easily because no one. Okay, they fled easily because nobody recognized them because they couldn't say that they were Sikhs. And, they, they, and this guy says, let's change that? I don't understand. That seems like a bad idea. One could recognize them. So, Guru Gobind decided to give six a distinct... Like, what's, what's happening? It's like, why are we not being oppressed enough? Let's give people a way to recognize us so that we could be oppressed. And like, they, I want some of that juicy, juicy victimhood narrative. Is that what is happening? I don't understand. Look from now on so that they would always be compelled to uphold Sikh values. So, in 1699, Guru Gobind brought his Sikhs together at Anandapur. After their morning prayer, he stood in front of a huge crowd and demanded a human sacrifice. Wait, maybe I misunderstood that. Oh, they, okay, so wait, so this is, oh, they scattered instead of holding the line. Okay, 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 okay. I misunderstood, I misunderstood, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The shocked crowd was silent for a while before one Sikh rose up and entered the Guru's tent. The look at this guy, like you keep atheism. Look at this comment guys, the one I'm highlighting. You keep your atheism to yourself. We don't need your atheism. Hey buddy, buddy, you're on an atheist channel. We didn't come to you, you're coming to us. <laughs> look at this. You came to an atheist channel and you're like, oh, you keep to your Keep your atheism to yourself, says the person who is on an atheist channel, coming to an atheist saying like, oh yeah, you keep your atheism to yourself. I came to you to tell you that. <laughs> like, I mean, okay, maybe try going away. Have you tried not coming to us? God damn it, these people are morons. The guru followed him in, and then the guru comes out with blood on his sword. He Wait, what happened? Something evil just happened. Yeah, why are you here? You say exactly. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> so what is happening here? Hold on. Nine, Guru Gobind brought his six together at Anandapur. After their morning prayer, he stood in front of a huge crowd and demanded a human sacrifice. Uh, what? The shocked crowd was silent for a while before one Sikh rose up and entered the Guru's tent. The Guru followed him in. And then, the Guru comes out with blood on his sword. He demands another sacrifice. No it's a trick! It's a trick! Hey, this reminds me of the... I think he's not sacrificing them. He's just trying to show like, I want your devotion. Is this what's happening? This is a trick. This is like, it's, it was just... It's just a prank, bro. Is this what's going to happen? Because if this is a prank, this is basically Abraham's story copied. Like, oh, you need to sacrifice your son. I want human sacrifice to show me that you're loyal. But guess what? Ah, you don't need to sacrifice. I was just... I was just testing your loyalty. Is this is a cop? Is this a copy of Abraham's story? All right, the people saying stop pausing. I'm not gonna stop pausing. If I keep playing for too long, I'm gonna get a copyright strike. And I also wanted to pause because I want to guess and see how good I'm at guessing. Okay. Another Sikh offers themselves and enters the tent again. Only the guru comes back out of the tent, bloody sword in hand. Again, 
another sacrifice. And yep. Again, and finally, after the fifth sacrifice, the guru re-emerges with the five six, all wearing saffron colored robes. See, it was a prank, bro. It was a prank. This is Abraham's story copied. The guru declares that these are the Panj pirates. Look at this guy. Like, oh, your voice is so annoying. The, 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 why are you here? The, go away. These people are morons. Go away. Why are you torturing yourself? Bring the five below. God damn, these people are idiots. Good ones. They would form the center of a new Sikh community called the Khalsa. He offered them Amrit, a bowl of sweetened water. And all five who belonged to different caste groups drank the Amrit from the same bowl, which would have been a huge deal back then. This signified they had joined a new casteless family, the Khalsa. Each of these volunteers had to leave behind their old surnames or caste names and adopt the same surname, Singh, which comes from the Sanskrit word mm. Simba, meaning lion. I know, right? No way. Is that a joke? Is that real? Singh comes from Simba and Simba means lion? It has, it has no relation to the Bantu word Simba, which also means lion. It's just, it's just a weird coincidence. Which is what a weird coincidence. That is a huge coincidence. These languages have nothing to do with each other. And both Simba and both languages means lion? That is very interesting. Yeah, see, I was right, by the way. Can we acknowledge? This is why I pause. It was, it was, it's a, just a prank, bro. Guru Govind, the first prank YouTuber. Pro no, 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 the, prank, the first prank YouTuber was Yahweh with Abraham. Um, yeah, Lion King. It's great. The Guru then begged the five beloved ones to let him join their Khalsa. They offered him the Amrit and the Guru became Guru Gobind Singh. Women were admitted to the Khalsa the same way as men. I oh, look at these women, they're so cute. I love these, I love this animation. After drinking the Amrit, they received the surname Kor, meaning princess. The Khalsa gave the six a new unified identity, tied together as one family with one name, without caste, with the goal of defending the weak and promoting justice. Look at these butthurt people in the live chat. These people are so obsessed with us. They, they hate me so much, but they can't, they, they have to come here. You guys are so stupid. You hate, you hate watch me, but it's good because I like, you guys are boosting the, look, he's saying bastard again. Oh my God, these people are so obsessed. So, you know, if you, imagine how dumb they have to be to, not, to hate somebody and hate what they're saying, but you still come and watch their content. It's you, you, the, you're, you're effed in the head, guy. You guys are so stupid. Go, go spend your time somewhere else. I mean, no, don't. I like just be here, just keep boosting our algorithm. But I'm so sorry for you. Today, many six still undergo the Amrit ceremony and take the surnames Singh and Kor. The Khalsa were also given new rules to follow, which included the wearing of the Panj Kakar or the five Ks. The first was Kes which is uncut hair to represent discipline. The second was a karga, a small comb in the hair. The third was a kirpan, a sword to uphold justice and protect the weak, which is nowadays usually a small sword. It is importantly not an offensive weapon and the Sikh code of conduct claims it can only be used to destroy tyrants and oppressors. It must not be used for anything else. The fourth is a kakahira, kind of loose fitting boxer shorts to represent sexual yeah. Wait, sexual restraint? So... They're, they're sex negative, but that sounds like the Mormons. To represent sexual restraint. And the fifth is Kara, a steel bracelet. Its circular shape represents the infinity of God. In okay, this is kind of like, this is kind of childish stuff. I don't know. It's like, ah, look at us. Look, we're so cool. We're so different. We have this and we wear like this and we have a secret magic underwear and we have like a sword. So this is kind of like kids playing like make-believe fairy tales. And like having their wand and their magic hats and stuff like that. I mean, it's cute. And like, oh, they all sound with the same. They all sound with the sound K. Like, come on, guys. Interestingly, the turban is not one of the five Ks. Instead, it's worn to cover the six long uncut hair, the Kes. 
turbans have become essential to Sikh identity and hold very special significance to them. Chances are, if you see someone wearing a turban, the vast majority of the time, that person will be a Sikh, not a Muslim. They're either a Sikh or a Shia Mullah. Uh, so yeah, it's very unlikely that you, they're Shia Mullah because Shia Mullahs are way, way, way less in numbers than Sikhs. And the color of their turban is different.